So the first thing we're going to do is take this part and this part and put them together and these will hold together the nuts that are used to actuate this actual syringe plunger. So first thing is we need to get one of these hex nuts in here. Press it in and we have a little 3D printed uh, ABS spacer that we put between them. The interior diameter just has to be bigger than the lead screw. Push the second nut in and then I'm going to come around to the other side and press in three M3 by 10 socket cap bolts. Um, they might be a little difficult to push in, but just get them all the way down. And then I'm going to turn this upside down, set it down for a second. Put three and three hex bolts into the plate and then bring it like that. Keep these guys inside and start tightening these. You don't have to put them very tight. You just have to get them to engage with the, the you just have to get a basic engagement between the bolts and the nuts. May take a couple of tries to get that engagement. All right, so this is together. So the next step we want to do is uh, put the, sh the shuttle for the uh, actual syringe plunger onto the main lead screw, just thread it on. And if it's really loose, what you can do is tighten those three bolts that you put in there, and that'll make it more difficult to spin. It'll also take out the slack between the two bolts. So we want to put that in, and then we want to get one of these guys on here, one of these larger hex nuts. Once that's in, you're good. We're gonna take one of these ZZ skate bearings, put it on here like that. We're gonna take the entire thing, slide it in like that, and pull the skate bearing into its little slot back there. We're gonna take the other skate bearing, put it on the back, kind of uh, push that into place as well. What we wanna do is we wanna bring this lead screw until its tip just sticks through this little uh, idler bracket down here and then we're going to bring the big hex bolt or hex nut back to the ZZ bearing until it makes contact with it. So then the next thing we have to do is put basically one of these lock nuts. You can use one of these or you can use a regular nut with just a little bit of Loctite in it. These lock nuts with these little nylon uh, rings inside them are great though. We're going to put one of these on the back of the lead screw. And this is to clamp the lead screw into the bearings, basically secure it to them so it can't slide back and forth with respect to these bearings. So these are really difficult to put in. You're gonna need one of these guys and you're gonna need a lot of physical strength or, or some way to hold this. So give me one second. I'll be right back and I'll show you how to do this. All right, so one way you can do this is just get a pair of pliers and like a paper towel that's been folded up a bunch. You can wrap it around the lead screw so that you don't damage the threads and then squeeze it really tight with this and then all you really need to do is get your uh, your wrench here and tighten it can be really difficult you're gonna need you might need help from somebody else it's very easy to spin the threads on this thing But once this is on, hopefully you'll never have to take it off. Again, you don't have to use one of these. You can use just a regular nut with some Loctite on it. That's probably easier. I prefer to use these because they don't leave that residue that Loctite leaves if you have to take it apart. This is just a technique for getting these lock these uh, lock nuts on that ends up being a little easier. If you have two nuts that you can counter tighten and lock against one another, you can use that as a handle. If you have another wrench too, to tighten this guy down. All 
One thing you do want to be careful of when you're doing this is that you don't tighten it and forget about this guy traveling along its length because that will happen if you're not careful. Just make sure that the carriage has plenty of distance to travel. back to tightening this guy. And when you do get it really close, you don't want to over tighten it, you'll just squeeze the plastic, break something, and that's going to ruin the whole function of this pump. So. All right, so I got it all the way. Okay, so the next step is getting the small gear put together. And uh, you should just take two of these M3 by 16s or 14s or whatever you have laying around. I think it needs to be 16 or longer. Put a couple of hex in it. Well, I put it in backwards. There's a hex side and a round side. Put these in like that. in your hex bolts. You don't want to tighten them down all the way, but I've got them tightened just so that they don't move around much while I'm handling this. Okay, so now they're secured. Um, but this is going to go on the motor, which we have right here. Now, if they're tightened, this shouldn't fit super well. Um, so you can tighten them down a lot. Uh, I didn't tighten them down that far, so this slides on and off the motor shaft pretty easily. But in the end, this guy has got to go on this. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach the motor. I'm only gonna put uh, bolts in opposing slots of the motor. Not all three, just cause you don't really need all three of them there. And then we're going to attach the major gear. And to do that, we're going to use two bolts, and they're going to be counter tightened on opposite sides of the major gear, squeezing it in place, but also locking it to the lead screw shaft. So, just put one of these guys on. And earlier, when you tightened this, it shouldn't be so tight that this can't rotate. If you do have it that tight, try and loosen these two bolts. Otherwise, your thing's just not going to work very well. Take the big gear, slide it down. And we're not going to tighten down these two bolts just yet because we've got to make sure that the small gear and the big gear's teeth align well with one another. Okay. So, I'm going to put the small gear on, and you have to back this up a little bit just to do that. See how now they match. I've got them assembled correctly like that. What I'm gonna do is while they're like this, I'm gonna tighten down the small gear pretty tight. Okay. And then as I spin the small gear, it's also spinning the motor shaft but it's engaged really well with the big gear. So I'm gonna back up this big gear's nuts and then tighten them down. I'm gonna counter tighten having one of these on each side. Like this. Spin them equivalent amounts. Make sure you don't shift the big gear's rotation. And that's ready to go. So this will now actuate when the, when the small motor spins, or sorry, the stepper motor spins. So I can back it up by doing this. So positive extrusion is indicated by the direction of the teeth. So it's that's positive, and uh, you know the against the arrow direction is negative or retraction. So that's all. Okay, so we have this assembled. The next step is to actually get it on the printer. So I've got the printer about simple metal here next to me. 
have removed the extruder as well as these two screws and these two screws. So what I'm going to do is place this thing like this. It's going to screw through these two holes into those two holes I bet remove the bolts from here. And the two bolts here are going to attach with this piece. And previously, if you printed this piece, what you could do is you can take the M3 bolts that slot in here and go ahead and put them in so that you can see them already in there ready to accept a bolt. So we'll assume you've already done that. Um, what you can go ahead and do then is attach this guy to the front. They don't need to be super tight, just tight enough to hold it in place. And then you're going to kind of push this guy up toward that piece, slot in these M3x40s, or M3x45s, I think they're M3x45s. thing you can do is take a couple of small M3 hex bolts, put them in the front part of the large volume extruder, like there where those two slots are, and get two just small M3 bolts. They can be a socket cap or they can be um, a uh, Phillips head like these are. those in and tighten them. Okay. So now this is done and this is actually ready to accept a syringe. Um, if we were to go ahead and load a syringe in, uh, the way it would work, and I'll just show you because we are going to eventually do that, is you would want to put it so that the syringe flange goes in this little slot here and that the plunger interacts with the shuttle. So I'm actually going to back this up. just slots in like that and to make sure that the syringe doesn't fall out during operation there's this little saddle like piece that accepts two small and three bolts one on either side and all you have to do is basically place it like that tighten it down uh, at the time of this film this is filled with an alcyon blue stained alginate so that's what that blue liquid is Okay, so now this is attached, you can take the printer, got the syringe attached to it, and the next thing I'm going to do is put the little piece here that accepts the long, the long needle that we use to print with. Okay, so the, the harness for the actual long needle tip, um, which looks something like this, uh, this is a really, really, really long needle from McMaster Car into which we've uh, epoxied a smaller uh, 250 micron inner diameter needle and then pulled the lure lock cap off of. So we basically made a really, really long needle with just a tiny orifice diameter. Um, so this doesn't actually go all the way up the length of this. It just goes to about there inside. So we've got this attached via various lure fittings to the giant syringe back here in a, in a setup not unlike some Bowdoin or BOWD and 3D printers. So this guy is going to go into this piece of plastic like so and it's going to sit right there where the plastic extruder on the Paramount Simple Metal used to be. So I'm going to show you how to put that together. 
we're gonna need to do is get three M3 by whatever, just as long as they're more than like four millimeters in length, they'll work. Put them through the holes here. And then two M3 hex bolts. Put those one here and one here. Set this guy like that. And then we're gonna come from the bottom holding three M3 hex bolts one at a time. We're gonna put them up against the little M3 bolts that we just slid through and tighten them down. And this is gonna hold this adapter in place. Now there's a clamp for the other side that's basically going to hold the needle in place. I'm going to put that on loosely. Uh, there's a spot for two bolts. These have to be really short M3 bolts, like M3 by 6 or something similar to that. Put those on like this. Don't tighten them all the way. Just, just engage them with the, the nuts inside. Then you're going to take the needle slot it through till the square portion sits right there and that's when you tighten these down and that's it